NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, avoid this area. This is a live look where lanes still closed on the interstate near Racine Street in Janesville after two semis collide, causing a chemical spill. Plus, guilty but not responsible, a former Dane County deputy accused of a double murder changes his plea. And reports from the officer involved shooting of 19-year-old Tony Robinson will be in the hands of the Dane County DA by the end of today. Good morning, everyone. I'm Christine Bellport. Ashley is off. We want to take you now for a quick update and new information we are learning from that semi crash that led to a chemical spill and a huge traffic jam on I-3990. Let's go back for our live look. We still have closed traffic lanes on I-90. You can see there traffic is being diverted off the interstate and rerouted off Racine Street. That's the Racine Street exit to US 14. Now we're also told some evacuations have been made in the Green Forest Run neighborhood due to the chemical spill. Once again, traffic is currently rerouted through Janesville East on 11 and then to US 14. Please avoid the area and expect major delays as you can see there for several more hours. By the way, all southbound eastbound traffic is still open at this time. Well, it is at least beautiful sunny day outside. But it is cold. Let's check in with meteorologist Brian Dukes. I don't mind. I just miss the sun, Brian. I know. It's been a couple of days since we've had any sunshine today. Uh, no short supply of that. The only thing to worry about, the cold temperatures and a few puffy clouds here and there. Farther uh, more to the east, well, you are seeing a little bit of lake effect snow, but that'll stay over Lake Michigan and not impact us. 26 degrees in Madison right now. 27 as you near the state line in Janesville, Monroe, and Mineral Point, but still 22 right now in Beaver Dam. Compared to this time yesterday, we are running a good 5 to 10 degrees cooler. So as you would expect, highs today only going to be into the 30s, and that'll be well below normal for the end of March. As we work through the afternoon, right around the freezing mark by 4 o'clock thereafter, falling back down into the 20s. Going to be another chilly night, but there are warmer days ahead and also another chance of rain and snow as we work through the weekend. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Christine? Well, Ian, thank you so much. Making news right now, a former Dane County deputy accused in a double murder has changed his plea. Andrew Steele is charged with first-degree homicide in the killings of his wife and her sister last August. He originally pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity or mental defect, but in court today, just this morning, he announced he wants to enter a guilty but not responsible plea instead. What that is still saying is that he has mental illness and should not be held responsible, but is admitting guilt. The Dane County DA will receive its final reports on the investigation into an officer-involved shooting in Madison today. The investigation is looking into exactly what led up to the shooting that killed 19-year-old Tony Robinson this month. The report will not be made public until Dane County DA Ismael Ozan decides whether to file charges in the case. Also today, a Wisconsin Marine who was killed when a military helicopter crashed in a training exercise will be laid to rest. Staff Sergeant Kerry Kemp was among seven elite Marines and four experienced soldiers who were killed when their chopper went down in dense fog along the Florida Panhandle earlier this month. Kemp leaves behind a wife and a one-year-old daughter. He was only 27 years old. Well, a Michigan family is suing the Kalahari Resort in the Wisconsin Dells. They claim their teenager was injured on a ride the business knew was unsafe. The lawsuit was filed Wednesday in Sauk County Court. It claims the teen was injured at the Kalahari Resort in 2012 on the indoor water slide called Sahara Sidewinders. The family's attorney says the ride imposed an unreasonable risk of injury to guests. The lawsuit claims the teen suffered personal injury, pain, suffering, and loss of enjoyment of life. Making news now around the world, new information on the investigation surrounding the German pilot who's believed to have deliberately crashed the plane into the French Alps this week. NBC's Katie Tour has more now from Germany. 
The German prosecutor's office has released findings of what they were able to find within the childhood home of Lubitz and the Dusseldorf apartment. They said they did not find any evidence of a suicide note or any note claiming responsibility for this crash. They found no evidence of a religious or political affiliation either, but they did find evidence of illness. Now, they wouldn't say what sort of illness exactly, but German media has been widely reporting that he was suffering from depression. They did find the evidence that he was being treated presently for that illness. Now, there were doctor's notes as well, doctor's notes excusing him from work in the past few days, including the day that he was flying that plane and the day that he crashed that plane into the side of a mountain, which means that he should not have been working that day, that he was ignoring doctor's orders not to be at work. Also evidence that he was hiding this from his employer, which would coincide with what Lufthansa has been telling us, that they had no warning signs. It coincides as well with what we're hearing from neighbors, that they didn't see anything wrong with him. I cannot imagine that she has uh, done it uh, with attention. This does not fit in this picture I have from him. Or from people who knew him during his flight club days here in Montebar, that they didn't see anything wrong with him. Investigators, though, will now be looking at whether or not they can find any reason that this was premeditated, any motivation for this crash. Back to you. A verdict is expected to come down this afternoon in the appeal trial of American Amanda Knox and her ex-boyfriend, Rafael Solicito. He was seen entering court today with his father. Now, Knox and Solicito are accused in the brutal 2007 murder of Knox's roommate. Italy's Supreme Court could decide to confirm the convictions and 28-year-old sentence for Knox and 25-year sentence for Solicito. Such a decision, though, would raise extradition questions for Knox since she is free back here in the United States. Around the nation now, crews are still working to put out hot spots at the site of the massive building explosion and collapse in New York, and they say they could be on the scene for days. Nineteen people were injured, four critically, when an explosion leveled one building and caused two others to collapse. NBC's Rahima Ellis is there and files this report. The collapse caught on camera in Manhattan's East Village Thursday afternoon, the first of three buildings to go down. We have a major building collapse on 2nd Avenue. After firefighters responded to a two-alarm fire that quickly escalated to a seven-alarm fire. I ran outside and I saw glass all the way across the street, people injured in between. It's pretty terrible. Get out of there! 250 firefighters from at least 50 FDNY units were on scene trying to control the blaze that quickly engulfed the five-story building, housing more than two dozen residential units and a restaurant. One man caught on tape helping a woman down from a fire escape right before firefighters arrived. The collapse came less than an hour after the fire began. It's a full fire at this time. Flames quickly spread to neighboring structures as crews worked overnight to contain the fire that New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says was possibly caused by plumbing and gas work. We are praying that no other individuals are found injured and that there are no fatalities. And that was Rahema Ellis reporting. Crews worked through the night to contain the fire in the surrounding buildings. Well, on a happier note, how about this Badgers in L.A. coverage now? Our Badgers have earned a spot in the Elite Eight. They pulled off a hard-fought win last night against North Carolina, though I will say they were sluggish to start. Final score, though, that's all that matters now. 79-72, to 72, they take on Arizona tomorrow with tip-off, scheduled for 5.07 p.m. And our very own Amy Flugsoff is in L.A. and caught up with some excited fans after last night's big win. It wasn't pretty, but hey, this is what March Madness is all about. Badger fans sure got their money's worth last night as the game went down to the last minute before the Badgers were able to secure their win. And the best way to describe the atmosphere inside, a complete nail biter. Oh my gosh, what a nerve wracking game. It was fabulous. It was, I kept saying we need to be ahead by five and they kept going by five. It was awesome. All I wanted to do is just finish the game, get it over with and get out of there with a big W. Clearly fans are pumped after that close game with North Carolina, but not everyone was feeling the stress. I caught up with Josh Gosser's aunt after the game and she said she knew all along the guys would be victorious. I know those guys work so hard together. They're such an awesome team. 
They're inspiring to watch. I love them. I knew they'd pull it out. Yeah. Not a doubt in your mind at all? Well, there's always fear, but no. <laughs> Josh really came through in that second half with some big plays for the Badgers. So I asked his aunt, how does he handle the stress of playing on a big stage like this? Josh is on the outside always cool as a cucumber. Uh, the whole rest of the family are biting their nails for him so he can just all be calm and <laughs> cool, I guess. Even though the last two games have been a bit tense, Badger fans believe the team has what it takes to make a return to the Final Four yet again this year. They're already looking past Saturday's game, and many tell me they already have their hotel rooms booked in Indy. In Los Angeles with the victorious Badgers, Amy Flukesop, NBC 15 News.